Alright, so today you guys are going to learn PHP and we have a special guest lecture. Uh, it's Alan from here and he's really good at PHP, so that's why he's going to be guest lecturing today. Also, he's teaching next semester. Yeah, he'll be one of the lecturers for the next uh, Web Design Decap class. Alright, uh, my name is Alan and today uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about PHP and MySQL, which I think is really cool because all the web, basically, by the end of the day, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of how most of the like, most of the websites today how they work how they how Facebook works and basically they all work on the same concept um, which is just interacting with with the database so um, modifications, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty similar to last uh, last semester's final project. So start, uh, start thinking about it. So um, today we're going to, uh, for the first part of this lecture, I'm going to be reviewing some of PHP and MySQL. And um, you guys have spent the first half of the semester working on the client side of things. You've, you've, you've spent working on uh, HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And I know for the past two weeks or so, you've been working on the, you've been starting on the service side. And you've seen some PHP, you've seen how to write SQL statements. Uh, your lab last week was to write the SQL statements. And this week you're gonna learn about putting those two together and making a really cool website that making something like a, like a Twitter application in your lab later. So, for some review. Um, PHP is a server-side scripting language that dynamically writes to HTML pages. Basically what that says is, instead of just having a website of HTML where every single person who goes to your website sees the exact same thing every time until you manually change it, PHP can do that for you. They can, they can serve different kinds of pages to different people based on what they want. PHP can use the service resources, um, so it's you, you can talk to programs on your computer. You can actually have it uh, access some kind of image processor. There's actually uh, so you can actually have it hook into something like Photoshop, and then dynamically write a draw an image. You can hook into an email inbox. You can hook into chat services, and more importantly, you can hook into databases, um, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And another last point is that the client never sees PHP. So uh, when you write when you write HTML. When you write your CSS, everyone can see it. Um, they just write, right click and hit view source. When you, when you write PHP, your client actually never sees it. You're probably the only person that will get to see it. And that's going to be important later when we talk about um, MySQL. So just a quick review about writing PHP. You open PHP with the bracket, open PHP, close it with the close, uh, question mark, close bracket. Everything else that's not in these tags is regular HTML and CSS. If only if these are, if you start these tags, will you actually be able to write PHP? Variables begin with a dollar sign, and PHP files end in .php. And here's some example code. Um, we'll talk more about some of the syntax later, but it should look not too foreign to you. User input. Um, get, post, and cookies. Um, pretty, pretty familiar. Get variables are from the URL. Uh, you retrieve them by dollar sign underscore get page, uh, and post variables retrieved by dollar sign underscore post. And this is basically how you send information to your PHP web page. So, if I if I wanted to um, log in to a website, I would have a form, and my form would be um, would be an action post and it would send it to my PHP website 
and it would be able to read whatever I typed. It would be able to read the username, it would be able to read the password, and uh, check if yes, check if uh, that you saved me well. So this is some new stuff uh, we didn't explicitly talk about. Uh, you guys didn't explicitly see this in your PHP lecture, but there's uh, two things. Uh, it's really important. It's called flow control, and it's really just a fancy way of saying I don't, I don't want to just execute sequential statements. I want some some statements to be executed and some statements not to be executed. So first, we talk about if if is simply if something is true, do this. Otherwise, do something else. So in this example, we have if the get page is equal to two, then we print out this is page number two. Otherwise, this is an unknown page. I mean, it's pretty simple. Anybody have any questions about this? So, an else statement's not required, and just remember that only one of these executes. A while statement is, while this condition, something is true, keep doing this. So it'll execute more than once. And in, in this example, we start off with a variable zero, a equals zero, while a is less than 10, we print out the value of a. And then we increment a. So we'll get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And remember that your code may execute more than once. It may never execute at all, or it may never terminate at all. If I, if I don't put this increment in here, this will never terminate and your program will crash. So I've gone over flow control, um, while and if. You guys probably haven't seen this before. Is, is there any questions on these particular two slides? Yeah. What's the um, part of the code that you said you can include so the system won't crash? Oh, uh, right here. Um, so I say a is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Now I have this conditional a is less than 10. If, if I just say print out a, a will always be less than 10. It will always stay zero unless I, unless I increment it by one every time. So just remember that you need something like something here that puts the marker forward so that this will somehow terminate something. Is there any other questions? Okay. <coughs> That's a review about SQL. Um, stands for a Structured Query Language. Um, this is how we communicate with our database. We ask them, ask our database questions. And this is all how, uh, also how we create, read, update, and delete records in our database. So it's just a basic interface to um, communicate with our database. And you've seen create, read, update, and delete statements. Uh, you wrote these in the lab last week. So you should be pretty familiar with these. Insert, select, update, and delete. Is there any questions on these? Did anybody have, is anybody confused about create, read, update, and delete? Because that's going to be a lot of questions. So let's move on to our new material, uh, PHP Math Equal Together. It would be really nice if we could interact with our database in our code. Basically, for example, in this, in here, I have a database of users. They gave me a username, they gave me a password, they gave me their email, and also they gave me their favorite movie genre, their favorite movie, and their age. So, I'm, in, so I'm, I'm gonna go out and make a movie recommendation service based on these three things that people gave me. Um, so I wanna make a website so that people can visit it and they can, they can say, oh, I wanna see a movie today, what should I see? Now normally, if you only had a database, you couldn't answer these questions. And if you only had PHP, you couldn't answer these questions. So basically, we wanna let people access their data and actually do something with this information. We want to do some calculations on this information. This is what you do when you send messages, when you play games, when you share photos. You have to have some persistent storage where people can go back and say, oh, this is what I said yesterday. This is what I put in yesterday. And from there, you can make decisions about the future. And you, you see this diagram in last, week, uh, last week's lecture. Um, PHP interpreter is very in, right in the middle. So when you have a web server, which is where all your HTML and CSS come, gets sent to your user, um, the PHP interpreter first 
reads the PHP file, then the PHP file talks to the database, and at the end it sends whatever it um, whatever it outputs to the web server, and that's what you see. Are there any questions about this diagram? So where does this interaction happen? Um, I, I'm sure you've all seen Dig. And Dig is basically um, one big PHP and MySQL website. And what they do is they give you the top news and they give you and they give you the top news. And this top news changes regularly. People can submit links, people can um, vote up links and make comments. So without PHP and MySQL, without interaction with the database, this is what you would see. And every single one of these things here is a query. This is from the database, this is from the database, all of these are from the database. Even this login. So now that we've decided that we want to connect to the database, we want to talk to the database, how do we first connect to it? How, where do we start? Well, first we have to let PHP know that we are connecting to the database. And you do this with these two simple lines. Um, it's database is equal to MySQL connect. And then you specify three parameters. Um, the last two parameters are your, your database username and password. And the first parameter is uh, where your database is located. And usually it's, it's localhost. And localhost simply just means it's on my current computer. So you probably don't have to worry about these things. These are usually given to you. And MySQL select database means which database do you want to use? Where do you want to grab your information from? Because a MySQL server can have multiple database um, servers. Is there any question on this? Now that we've connected to our server, we want to communicate with it. And you guys probably already know how to communicate with it. And that's through SQL statements. So we do this with our create, read, update, and delete statements. And if we do and we do this in PHP with something called MySQL query. Um, how do, in here, how do we find the names of people who are at least 23 years old? Can someone tell me if I have this field called age, how, what's the SQL query that corresponds to finding usernames of people who are at least 23 years old? Select username from people where it is, uh, where you're using Yeah, exactly. So select username from users where A is greater than minus 20. And it's really simple in PHP. You just literally write that out and say MySQL query, select username from users where age is greater than 23. And then you also give it a pointer to your MySQL connection. And we said it was we said it was dollar sign DB. So now we've written three lines of code. We've written our MySQL connection, we've written get the database, select out which database we want to use, and we've written MySQL query. Now how do we actually get the information out? How do, how do we get the information out from this MySQL query? We use a last thing called MySQL fetch a song. Um, don't worry if there's if you feel like there's so much so many things that you, so many functions you have to memorize. Um, this is just a general structure of how you would do MySQL, uh, MySQL fetch from a database. So there's a lot of there's a lot there's a lot of references on it. You don't have to memorize this, everything here, but just just know how you would normally uh, the general flow of this. And we use this by saying return is equal to some variables equal to MySQL fetch us on query, and then that the query refers to what you wrote earlier. And this gives you the results from the database uh, one by one. Are there any questions on this? On my uh, query or fetch? When you're writing PHP, is there a way to tell if you, if you make an error? Yeah, actually there is a function called MySQL error. Um, that will tell you any MySQL error 